Thank you. I really enjoyed here. Uh, we had some quite interesting talks and uh, I also had a talk and the audience was very great. I really had fun. That's great to hear. Um, you're a hacker, you, uh, an ethical hacker. Can you explain for an audience that maybe is not so familiar with the wording what an ethical hacker differentiates from a bad hacker maybe? Of course. So an ethical hacker means I use my knowledge only for good things. That means I don't attack people, I don't steal uh, bank data or stuff like that. Um, I do exactly the opposite. So I help companies to protect against evil hackers. And I know how to do this because I know how these hackers work. I know their techniques and I know how to uh, defend against these techniques. So you've been a hacker for quite some time already. Can you say or tell us how hacking has changed maybe? Yeah, so uh, I'm doing hacking for quite a while right now. So I started like 16 years ago and there was many things happening. So like back in the days, it was very hard to find information about the topic. There was very, very few information available. And uh, uh, also there was not, not YouTube or something like that. And nowadays you have all the possibilities to get into this topic. You have video tutorials on YouTube and also the awareness has raised in the, in the last years. Because I would say like, uh, five years ago, it was much, much easier to hack websites and uh, I don't want to say it's hard nowadays, but uh, something happened. So people started to get more aware and started to uh, invest more into uh, protecting against hacker attacks. Mm -hmm. When you say people get more aware, I assume that you're referring to the ones that you are in contact with, so mainly your customers. Are you specified on a specific area or are you across industries? So our, cr our cross industries basically. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, we cover companies uh, from the industrial sector, we cover companies uh, like online shops, but also big companies like Apple, Nokia, Siemens, eBay. And uh, today I showed the vulnerability in the current Google Chrome version. So it's like very broad and uh, yeah, I do everything from web hacking to hardware hacking to software hacking. Mm -hmm. What are the top three vulnerabilities that you come across at your customers? So uh, yeah, there's just like one classic, I think uh, many people know this already, it's called an SQL injection and this is uh, quite widespread. An SQL injection is a vulnerability that gives an attacker the possibility to uh, gain access to the database of the target. So it's mainly a problem of websites and you mainly find it, for example, in online shops, um, but also on, uh, on um, uh, company websites and uh, it's very widespread. So there's also this OVAS top 10, which weights, uh, which vulnerabilities are the most widespread and SQL injection is uh, in the top. So it's like the first or the second. And uh, the, the second is um, definitely uh, cross-site scripting, which is also a web vulnerability. And um, this gives you the possibility to execute uh, uh, arbitrary JavaScript code on other websites and gain access to the cookies or manipulate the website. And the third uh, vulnerability I came across quite often are memory corruptions and buffer overflows. So these are vulnerabilities in software itself, so not in the website, but for example in the web server. And today I also demonstrated the memory corruption vulnerability. What would you gain if you exploit that? So uh, if you exploit the memory corruption, you basically have the possibility to execute your own code on a target device. That means you can uh, drop a Trojan horse or you can just like uh, get all the information from the target device that you want. So for example, today I showed how you use uh, an exploit in Google Chrome to get full access to the browser window and dump data directly out of the browser window, like bitcoins or passwords, uh, everything you can uh, think of. And nowadays, we, we're using the cloud so much, so it's much easier to get this data. Absolutely. Um, so you're talking about Chrome, and it's possible to have Chrome on two different devices. So one is like an installed PC, and one is on mobile devices. Where do you see the biggest threats in the future? I think, I think uh, both are uh, the same from the rating, uh, because uh, if you find a vulnerability in Chrome on the desktop version, it's very likely that you have a similar vulnerability in the mobile version. You just have to do some adjustments in the uh, exploit code, the payload and stuff like that. But basically the vulnerability remains the same since both are using the same engine to render the code. Mm -hmm. And uh, is Google aware of uh, what you're doing and how did they react to it if you told them to? So the vulnerability has already reported to Google and they're right now working on a fix and they reacted very fast because we provided a full working exploit and uh, I have to say Google is very uh, responsible when it comes to vulnerabilities and they address it very fast and also provide patches very fast. Mm -hmm. but can you talk about uh, new vulnerabilities that you're looking for already? 
Um, of course, I mean, there's quite a lot. So I always do a lot of research in this area. And uh, for me, most interesting uh, are uh, big softwares that are used by a lot of people. So uh, Chrome is one of them, but also Safari and uh, Internet Explorer. So browsers are an interesting tar target in general. But also right now, um, I uh, research a lot of uh, industrial devices like IoT devices. And um, some uh, weeks ago, I demonstrated uh, how to hack a pacemaker, which is um, a connected IoT device. And uh, right now, uh, I want to show that uh, IoT is a very, very serious topic when it comes to cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. You mentioned IoT. IoT also goes across all industries, um, different verticals. Do you see some verticals better equipped against cybercrime than others? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like the uh, fintech sector or the medtech sector, they are really aware of uh, the risk of uh, cyber attacks. So they are more likely to uh, to uh, have a security strategy right in the beginning. So most of them design a security strategy before they even launch their product. And this is uh, how you should actually do it. And I have to say, like, especially in the last uh, two, three years, uh, since the awareness has rise fast and also there are a lot of new business models which are like fully digital um, these fully digital companies uh, are pretty aware of uh, that they are a target for for hackers so i would say like everything that comes from the uh, fintech sector and medtech sector also like um, uh, bitcoin uh, technology and stuff like that these people really know that they are a target and um, many of them do a lot to protect themselves i mean that uh, often refers to big companies who also have some kind of budget to address that but if we look at uh, the SMEs of these worlds or startups, what recommendation would you give to them how to protect their business? I mean, Espe yeah, I'm sorry, especially if it's like a, a business that has a potential for large scaling, high growth. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have a business which uh, has a potential for, for large scaling, you should definitely uh, think about a security uh, strategy before you launch your business. And, uh, I would say like many uh, companies uh, think uh, it makes sense to invest in security later after the business is running successfully, uh, but this is like uh, one of the biggest mistakes you can actually do. So even if you don't have a lot of money, try to work together with a security specialist because your developers don't know how to make your code secure, only a security specialist know how to do this. And this is why it really makes sense also for small companies to invest uh, the money into security before you invest it, for example, in marketing. Mm -hmm. And what are, what are the major um, components of a strategy, a security strategy? Yeah, so the major components are like uh, getting an overview how your infrastructure looks like. So, uh, for example, uh, when I try to uh, find vulnerabilities in infrastructure, I first have a look at uh, which software is being used and how are the components are being used together and stuff like that. So you can either uh, do this white box uh, by um, by providing me an uh, overview of your whole infrastructure and landscape and I have a look at it. Or you say, just try to get in from it from the outside and we do a black box and then I try to get as much information as possible from the outside. So the first thing is getting information and getting to know your enemy, getting to know how the system works. Mm -hmm. And the next step is um, using the weakest components that you see and directly attacking them. So instead of uh, just randomly attacking the whole thing, you have to spot the weakest point and attack the weakest point because this is what the experienced attacker will do. And when you speak of the enemy, there's certainly different types of enemies. One, okay, one that uh, joins them together is probably money, the search of money, so exploiting bitcoins, but also getting data and sell it. Is there other types of enemies? Exactly, yeah. I mean, you have a lot of uh, enemies nowadays. Uh, it starts with, uh, like you say, hackers are interested in earning money fast, um, but also uh, there are a lot of people who just buy hackers. So if someone doesn't like your company, like a competitor, uh, nowadays, it's much more easier to get access to uh, paid hackers. For example, in the dark net, you find easily people that you can pay a specific amount of money and they attack your target. For example, they deface the website or start a denial of uh, service attack and you can even buy denial of service attack. So you have to deal with competitors, you have to deal with random hackers who just look for easy targets. And um, yeah, there, there are so many attacks that in many cases you don't even know why the hacker actually attacked you. And uh, maybe a last closing comment, what would be your recommendation to people when it comes to cybersecurity with an outlook in the future? So my recommendation would be definitely take the uh, topic serious and invest time in it. And uh, it should be uh, the security strategy should be part of your core business strategy. If not, you're a target.